Father, thanks a million in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. You may be seated. Obligations. The first obligation is your obligation to love the Lord. Second obligation is your obligation for reasonable service. A third obligation... Is your obligation to become a teacher. Amen. Amen. Your fourth obligation is your obligation to travel into the world to preach the gospel. Yes. A Christian is a natural traveler. I said a Christian is a natural traveler. Yeah. Natural traveler. Traveling is part of Christian work. Rarely has there been anyone who worked for God who doesn't have to travel a lot. Yes. You see, unfortunately, due to poverty, you see traveling as a promotion. <laughs> yes. Poverty makes you see traveling as a promotion. So that if you are a leader in a Ghanaian organization, you must know that the Ghanaians who are working there see the opportunity to travel as a kind of lifting of the Lord. <laughs> God has moved. Anything I'm going to travel. abroad. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And poverty has caused many Guineans to travel for economic reasons. Most Guineans and Nigerians travel for economic reasons. That is why you find them in London. They've never seen Buckingham Palace before. They've never seen many of the famous tourist sites because they are, unless they have a job in the park around there. I know somebody who used to work in the park. Carrying chairs. But you wouldn't see them 
doing that. So poverty has misinterpreted what traveling is. Traveling is part, one of the essential parts of ministry. Yes, traveling. Rarely can you fulfill your ministry without traveling somewhere. Yes. When you donate yourself to ministry and to God, just as Jesus donated himself, he said, I will go. No one takes my life. I lay it down myself. It's not by economic reasons or anything that is made. I myself am laying myself down. When you lay yourself down truly for God, it is very likely that you will discover the role of traveling that you are now supposed to travel for God. Rarely can you fulfill your ministry without traveling. Yes. Sometimes to be trained in the ministry, you have to travel. Sometimes to see certain things, you have to travel. I started traveling in the ministry years ago. Years and years ago. Traveling. Intentionally and consciously. When nobody invited me, okay, I went to start a church in Switzerland, that was the first time I started traveling for ministry. First church I started was in Switzerland. Geneva. 1992. October. <laughs> 1992. Yeah. I went to start a church. 1992. October. You were two years old? No problem. You weren't born? Rarely can you fulfill your ministry without traveling. When you do that, you will find out that traveling is not as glamorous as it seems to be from the poverty point of view. Because your point of view depends on your viewpoint. <laughs> your point of view is that traveling is a promotion. Traveling is a, going to get something. Traveling, I'm going to get money. I'm going to do something. We are going somewhere. But that point of view comes from your viewpoint. Your viewpoint is the viewpoint of a poverty-stricken person. True. You will find out when you have nothing else to see and nothing else to get and everything is where you are staying you will see that when you are invited to travel, you will not go. One day, I started to see things from the viewpoint of a rich American. Yes. I met a rich American pastor. American pastor who was rich. I mean, when I say rich, not that he was so rich, but it's like, you know, they are affluent. They have everything. When you invite them to travel somewhere, it's like, wait, no, you know, God hasn't called me. You know, I, I don't, you know, unless the Lord speaks to me, you know, unless the Lord, you know, I'm sorry. You know, they don't go anywhere. There is nothing, there is no advantage. There is no reason. There is no benefit. Yes. Unless God sends them. I tell you. But for your viewpoint, you see, that was the viewpoint of the Americano. But from the viewpoint of the man from Bechem and the man from Brekum and the man from KJB and the man from Ogbomosho and the man from uh, 
Bodrasi. And Brikusu. Hey! When you say a traveling to Hamburg, you say, wow! The Lord himself has arisen on an angelic chariot and has made a way where there is no way. But the real, when William Carey said that he was leaving England, he married, he was 19 years old, his wife was 25 years old. Yeah. And <laughs> when he decided that he was going to, he was going on a mission to India. You see, Almost immediately when you get into real ministry, traveling comes in. His wife said, yeah. His wife said, I will not go. I said, I will not go. Yeah, I will not go to India. Why? I will not go. Yeah, I will not go. Because it is your viewpoint. You see, that gives you your point of view. And from her viewpoint, why should I go to India when I'm okay here in England? I'm going to meet savages, sit on crocodile-infested rivers with hippopotamus and anaconda snakes, the, the, the cobra, king cobra, that is the big one. Do you know the king cobra the only food that it eats is snakes. It doesn't eat anything except snakes. Yes. Huge like that. Big like a man. It can stand up to the height of a man. Yeah. These are what are in India. Tigers. Huh? Huh? No. But once you enter into ministry, you will start to travel. Traveling is part of ministry. Now, traveling for God is different from traveling for business, traveling for school, traveling to get something, but traveling for God. And there are risks in traveling that you will come to see. Oh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, when I started in the ministry, almost at the very beginning, 1992, 1989, I was a doctor. 1990, I finished house job. 1991, I came to full-time ministry. First January, starting. After doing the church for one year and some months, I decided to start a branch in Europe. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing what, you know. Yeah. And I started going to Switzerland to start the church. Got a driving license. Got a car. Started moving around. Going to people's houses. Visiting. Following people. Renting halls. Organizing people. Prayer meetings. 21 days fasting in the winter. <laughs> Prayer meeting daily, shouting. I prayed for everybody to receive the Holy Spirit. No one knows the Holy Spirit. I prayed for everybody to receive the Holy Spirit. I taught everybody how to play instruments. I bought drums, bought organ. Bought keyboard, bought amplifier, bought speakers. Taught this one how to play organ, this how to play guitar, this how to play drums. I taught everybody. They all play now. Today they all play. Yeah. That's traveling and working for God. The church is still there today. Even this afternoon I spoke to one of the church members. The pastor's there. Yeah who was there right when I went in 1992. She was there. 
Yes. So working for God involves traveling to where God says you should travel to. And when I was going, I left my wife behind. We had two small children in an uncompleted house. And when, as the children keep growing and then they start seeing, understanding that you are going, Daddy, are you, where are you going? Because when I came, I had to go, but the church didn't have a pastor, so I had came back, go back immediately. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Initially, it looks wonderful. But there comes a time you would understand that the traveling is more than even you, you, you will not even understand what traveling, you, you will see that it's not as you thought. Yeah. It is your, your point of view is, is, decides your, is from your viewpoint. And the viewpoint of a poverty stricken uh, economic refugee <laughs> it makes you see traveling as a promotion. Yes. Are you listening to me? So one of the obligations of a Christian, have I read any scripture? No. How come I have not read the scripture? Okay. Let's read it. Matthew. Twenty-eight. Jesus came and said unto them, All power is given unto me in heaven. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. Amen. And teach. You see, I told you there comes a time you must be a teacher. Now, not only do you become a teacher, you become a teacher on the go. Moving. Moving here, moving there, moving everywhere. Holy Ghost power. Moving you. Go ye therefore and teach. Go ye therefore and baptize. Teaching them to observe what I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Even unto the end of the world. But you shall receive power. Acts 1.8 after the Holy Ghost is come, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That is the commission of a Christian. It's an obligation. Now, if you cannot get up from your room in, uh, what is the place called? Liman. And you cannot move from Liman to Pentagon. Or you cannot move from Liman to uh, TF. To go and follow a soul. A journey that God is sending you on travel from Liman Hall. Or J. Nelson. Even J. Nelson to Liman. <laughs> or Queens Hall to Africa Hall. Uh, Africa Hall, the person you have to visit on the 8th floor. And you cannot walk out. There's no lift. You say, I cannot go up. It's too far. That is your first missionary journey which you are rejecting. Your first missionary journey, you are rejecting it. And you see, if you are thinking that, oh, I'm going to marry this man of God. I'll go to Singapore. I'll go to Germany. I'll go to this. I'll go to... When you are not prepared to go from Queen's Hall, to Africa Hall or to Unity Hall. Hey! You are not prepared to go from Commonwealth Hall. Do you know how many times I went up to Commonwealth Hall for follow-up? How do you think I met Bishop Saki? I went on visitation one day from Legon Hall. I walked to Saba Annex B. Okponglo. Walk all the way. That was his room. He was there. When I got there and I was with my, my friend, Sister Adelaide, I, I decided to go on the visitation with her. Yes. 
You be there and don't have friends in the university. <laughs> you will be suffering later on because you didn't have friends in the university. I decided to go with her. Let, let's go on, bis- on visitation. Yes. When I got there, when we got there, I think it was on the first floor, the second floor. We were looking for his room. We were going room to room. We couldn't see which one. Then we came to a room. And outside the door, they have written on a piece of paper, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And I told the sister I was moving with that, this, this must be the room of the guy. This must be the room. Yes. And he was not there. We have to walk from back to, the, to this way, go here, here, up and down. Okay, Charlie, you have no energy to just from here to here. You can't go from here to here. You can't go. You can't follow somebody. You can't care for somebody. You can't go out. You see, that is, that is it's like, it, and you expect God to send you to Indonesia. You say, God is going to send me on a wonderful journey. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to where? You are going nowhere. Ministry involves energy. It involves movement. That is why, Charlie, and uh, it is activity before middle age. By the time middle age comes and your bones start creaking small. Look, you may not know. Even golf. We have golf. They have golf for normal and then there's uh, uh, seniors. They call it seniors. From a certain age, it's like you are considered a senior. Yeah. I don't know the age. I think it's 50. <laughs> Like you are a senior. So it's like you are in a different class of 50 or 60. I don't know. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. You, you think you are the same always. You wouldn't take a little journey for the Lord. Small, small things you don't want to do. You just want to sing in the choir. You can't come for choir. You can't go here. You can't do the ministry involved finding people. Hey. It, you see, why, why would traveling come about? Traveling will come about because souls are in pockets and at locations. Souls where you are get finished. They finish in their ability to receive from you. Soon, wherever you are is saturated and you need to go to the next place. Traveling is part of Christianity. And Jesus specified four geographical Places, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's our obligation. Because our Savior said this. When you have the Holy Spirit, eh? Holy Spirit, you will be an evangelist and a winner of souls. When the Holy Spirit came on the disciples, the arrival and the presence of the Holy Spirit caused 3,000 people to be saved just that afternoon. Yes, when when the Holy Spirit came, the immediate, what do you call it, was souls, 3,000, just, I mean, his presence for some few minutes on the earth is souls are saved. If the Holy Spirit is leading you, your life will be directed towards winning of souls and bringing people towards God. It is like an almost immediate reaction of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your personal life. I'm telling you. The spirit of money, finding money, go in the world and get money, go in the world and get degrees, go into all those. It's the spirit of the world, not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Read your Bible. You don't have to believe me. I'm, I'm nothing. Just believe your own Bible and read it and see what happened when the Holy Spirit came. He said, When the Spirit comes, you see power, and what will you do? Would you, would you, he says, You will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. is a sign that you have the Holy Spirit when souls are one in your life. Absence of the Holy Spirit, absence of soul winning, absence of crusade, absence of all these kind of things. That's one here. Stand apostasy descends on the church. I heard yesterday a church, they are revising their constitution to accept, define what is marriage. Yes. I think Presbyterian church in, I don't know which part of the 
whatever, they are redefining the definition of marriage within the church. This is all that you'll be doing. You fall into all kinds of whatever. Meanwhile, when the Holy Spirit is there, you will see that you move. And you see, some years ago, when the Holy Spirit was moving in the American church, you will physically see Americans moving. Not just seeing them on TV, you will see them in Ghana, in Boko, in Tagradi, here. I've seen houses they built, Americans. Traveling is an obligation. It's an obligation for he came from heaven to earth. He traveled here. You will be a mission, a missile, a mover, a person moving to wherever the soul can be located. That is the presence of the Holy Spirit on your life. You are sitting here receiving. If you like, eh, travel to South Africa. South Africa. Southern Africa. East Africa. You will see how much. You know, when we talk about your level of Christianity, like when I went to Nigeria once, I, I realized that Nigeria was like about 40 years. To me, I felt it was between 20 to 40 years ahead of Ghana. In Christianity, I don't know how it is now, but I felt that Nigeria was like about 20 to 40 years ahead of Ghana. Yeah, and at more advanced, the church is more advanced in many ways. Some years ago, I'm sure it's still advanced. When you go to South Africa, South Africa is a country. And Southern African countries, you find out that they are 40 years behind. Not 40 years ahead, 40 years behind Ghana. Yes. You wouldn't know. You have a lot to give. And a lot you have that you don't know. You see, when you visit a country, you will not really understand. But if you stay there, you see their you will understand what, I, what we're talking about. There's a, lot, there's a lot within you. But laziness and excuses will let us say, no, 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 no. Meanwhile, when people have to do things, do you know all the Ghanaians who are abroad in China, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, here, there, Ghanaians, one of the most traveled group of people, Ghanaians, Nigerians, we are the top missiles of the world. <laughs> Ghanaian, Nigerians, what? You will find us everywhere. But not as missionaries for the church. As survival missionaries. Looking for money, looking for survival, looking for job. Yes. Everywhere in the world. Moving around. Moving. 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 Phlegmatics, this is where. Your sifting begins. You see, Jesus told Peter, Satan have decided to sift you like wheat. The word sift means sinyazo. He has decided to sinyazo you. Now, what does it mean to be sinyazoed? To be sinyazoed means to be sifted, which means in the dictionary to be closely examined. So after you've been trained, you become closely examined. And then when the sifting happens, things which are not right and the correct size, they don't go through the sifting. They don't go through the filter. So, so many of us, you see, we will be taken, come, and you'll be put in a sieve like this. And you'll be shaken. And then if your temperament is not good, you see that it will be lying at the top. It didn't go through. If your sex life is not correct, you see that it will be at the top. If your lying, honesty life, you see that it has, when they shifted your life, your educational life is not correct, you see that it's all, so many things will be, they didn't go through. So what happens on the mission field is that when you go, when you go, you see, you ask, you ask, there's some sifting. Then you start to see that, oh, you see now, the pornography they were talking about, it has come up now. Again, it is like a main problem. This sex thing they were talking about, I see that now these beautiful girls from 
uh, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Now when they shake the bottom twice like this, you see that a Sinyazo has come. You have been sifted. Hey! Yes. Or your Enos has been tampered and you meet another person who is also into Enoses. And he says to you, brother, they have a sign they will make. They know themselves. They know themselves. They make a sign before you realize you are there. Sifting. And some of us, it showed up in the fact that you are not prepared to move from Lagos Hall to Commonwealth Hall. Yes, you are not prepared. Laziness. That is why you see that now people on the mission field, mostly cholerics, they do well. When you send a choleric, he does well. Most of the guys who do it, the other choleric, sanguine, choleric, melancholic, they are the guys who do it. The phlegmatic, you see that, it's, they start to fail from day one. Mostly. Because the guy is not ready to move. Just as he was not ready to move right in Accra. Right when you were in Liman. You are not prepared to move from here to here. True. From here to here, you cannot move. Yeah. You are not prepared to move. Move around. Wow. Wow. So traveling, moving around is part of Christianity, energy. That is why you must choose ministry and choose to work for God, not as a retired person, but as the youngest possible person. Like Count Zinzindorf, at the age of 12, he had formed a secret society of the children, good children's order. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Sit down. So sifting begins. And that is what we call closely examine. You'll be closely, stand up. You'll be closely examined like that. They put you in the thing and they shake you like this. Then we see leaders. You are either a bad leader, a good leader, anointing one because you, you are flowing with the crowd. It's like a singer who has been left alone. No instruments this time. Sing. You get it? Just sing. Or a pianist who's been left, play alone. Like Danny Boy does. He plays alone. Then you see that it's only him. Everything depends on only him. There's no second keyboard, no third person. No, it's him alone. So if he's good, he's good. And he stands and holds the fourth alone. The singer can sing without any instrument. That is what happens. And that is where you start to see phlegmatism. You're not prepared to move. When it's time to go on visitation, you say, <sighs> when it's time to rise up and pray, even to get out of your bed, to come from here to here so that you will pray. How do you think God can send you to China? Of course, if it's to dress and sport and have sport and go shopping in Singapore or shopping in the uh, 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 Philippines, beautiful shops and what have you, of course you'll be ready. Every girl is ready to, whether she's phlegmatic or choleric or whatever, she's ready for that. Yes. But when there's nothing to gain, then you start to see, you've opened your leg and you are stretched out with your fuses blowing all over the place. No ready to move in any way, form or fashion. You shall receive power. And your location will change. Amen. Jerusalem will change. Amen. Judea will change. Amen. Samaria will change. Amen. Atamos will see you there. Amen. The uttermost part of the campus. Yeah. Uttermost parts of the camp before we come to uttermost parts of the earth. <laughs> True. Sit down. So friends and brothers, you must realize that Christianity involves movement. Yeah. I may have to send you to Kintampo. The pastor in Kintampo is a graduate from UST. Yeah. He's a graduate from UST. 
and, and you cannot go there? You cannot go there? That's why the world falls to other religions. Who is that pomposity of Christians. Yeah. As long as you are here, expect to be sent anywhere. It's not that I don't like you. It's rather that I like you that I'm sending you. Yes, I hope that I'll have the opportunity to send all of you to go and to go and work for God. I hope I'll have the opportunity. Although I would like you to stay with me. Yes. You think I don't want you to be here? If you go, I'll be lonely. <laughs> Dr. Go, you would wonder that don't I want to have members? Yes. Don't I want to have anybody around me? Every day I say I'm sending people. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the people that I send, after they have been sent for some time, what they go and learn there, they become more useful to come back. Yeah. After they fulfill their mission. Sometimes they fulfill it just as. Sometimes when they say, yes, I'm going, they start going, then they become useful. Because you know, your attitude has changed by being ready to go. Yes, you must be ready to go and ready to work for God and ready to travel. Yes. You know, as a child, I traveled. I've always traveled. Even to come to Ghana, I traveled. To be here, I had to travel because I wasn't born here. So traveling has been, so I never knew that traveling was a reward. <laughs> when I became a pastor, after some time of working, now I realized that no, people see traveling differently. They see it as like, if you are blessed, the door is open. <laughs> But is 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 it? Then I realized that there are times I've made people travel just because I realized that's how they think. Yeah, I realized that that's how the person thinks. Like if he doesn't travel, he's not blessed. So I'll say, okay, travel. <laughs> but I see travel as work. Yeah, I'm supposed to travel next week. I'll prefer not to travel. Yes, I would prefer not to travel. I prefer to stay in the house. Yes. Yes. I would prefer to stay at home. Yeah. I told Ida one day, I said, traveling. She said, I said, one day you will, cry. You will be sad because you are traveling. You will be tired. And it happened. She was crying. I want to go home. I want to bring it. <laughs> I see you traveling. Are you ready to go? To where? Where are you ready to go to? Huh? I can't hear the town. Anywhere. Are you sure it's anywhere? If they bring the sifting and they start to examine you closely, will it still be anywhere? When your mother starts to object and your grandmother also steps in and your father makes a call, what will you be saying? Tell somebody, I'm ready to be a traveler for Jesus. I'm ready to spend and be spent. It is my obligation. Yes, it's the obligation of Christians. To use means. And one of the means is to travel. Is there. Yeah. So that's why I'm always sending people. The church must send or it will end. Mm. I, I'm having a camp next week or whatever. One of these weeks. And the theme of the camp is the church must send or it will end. Yes. The church must send or it will end. Yes, send or end. Yes. 
The church must send or it will end. As for me, I would like the Holy Spirit to be associated with me. How many would like the Holy Spirit to be associated with what you are doing? And the Holy Spirit associated with me is soul winning. Receive the Holy Ghost and start moving, moving. Move through Jerusalem. Where is your Jerusalem? Your Jerusalem is your campus, your hall. Move to the Jerusalem. Move to the campus. Let there not be any room, any hall, any place that you don't know. Yeah. Even London. Many places I know in London is because I was following souls. That's how I know the place. I know the places. Uh, when you mention the place, I can remember going to follow some people there. Yeah, there are places when you mention the name of the uh, oh, I've walked all those places looking for people, house to house, door to door, following maps and addresses, tubes, spending my time and my money to find people. Yes. That is why I will encourage you to work for God when you are young, fresh, your bones are energetic. Naturally, you are just booming with life. Yes. What a blessing. Is it a blessing? Are you excited about that? Are are you ready to move for God? I'm changing your professional. I said I'm changing your professional. I'm changing your life's work. Hear it well. I said I'm changing your life's work. Yes. It's changing. I said it's changing. Your life's work is changing. Your profession is changing practically. Yes. It is it it is my obligation as a as a believer eh, to go to the ends of this world as far as any that is why you see anybody who has a high nose, looking down on things. You don't belong in Christianity. Yeah, you look down. You know, many times, you look at people say that they look down on places. Oh! He's a villager. Look at those, that village. Look at that hole. Oh, where? Mali. Hey! Hey! Gimme, what is gimme? Hey! You can't, you don't belong here. I said you don't belong here. Yeah. Twice, I had, maybe twice, three times even more, I had some foreigners working, they were working in the ministry. One day, one of them made a comment, I realized the person doesn't have a good mind about, about Ghanaians. Ah, you see, all these Ghanaians who are those when the person said that, I took an immediate decision. It's time for you to go. <laughs> yeah. Not a few days later, there was a meeting. You got to go back. Not many days after. You got to go back to your country. You got to go back to your country. Go find a beloved over there. Get married. You start looking down on people. Your time is is over. You can't look down on countries, places, people as a missionary or somebody God is going to use. There is nobody that is low, if you don't know what I'm telling And there's no place that is low, if you don't know. There is nowhere in the world that is a low place. As far as God's work is concerned, it's a place. A soul is a soul and it's precious to God. Wherever he's coming from, you can't look down. And that thing has to be killed out of you. And so another person made a comment. Said, oh, it was a circle. It was a circle. And you know how the people were trying to whatever. And so, you know, I look at the people and I saw those people. I said, when I heard, I said, oh, really? Is there something wrong with the people? Is the people that are circled? There's something bad about the people and didn't want to touch this. And I, was, I took a note, mental note of it. He, he, he didn't know I was, I, I, I took to it. And even yesterday, I met some people. They made some comments about Ghana. I said, these people, there's something wrong. I immediately, I was giving them advice to go here. I started to give the advice to the other direction. I said, go to the other place. Oh, yeah. 
don't, you can't look down on a place. You see, when God is sending you the uttermost part of yourself, what uttermost? What uttermost? You are looking down on places. Has he specified when his uttermost part? It includes everywhere. You have raised up your nose and are looking down on places and people, especially places. Ha! Huh. You don't belong here. I said you don't belong in this meeting. You better come for career counseling session next week. You'll be here for career development. Yeah. I took a note of it. And I sent the person back to where the people are. You understand? And now the person is completely backslidden. Yeah. Because pride comes before a fall. Totally backslidden. I took a mental note when the person said he we made, said something was in a bus, something, something made a comment. There is a way when you listen, you see that the person looks has a way of looking down at whatever is happening. Meanwhile, where you are coming from, what is going on there? What is there? What do you mean? I said, What do you mean? One day I sent a brother to Uganda. And when he went, something terrible happened. Yeah. When he came to me, he told me, he said, Bishop, you know, it has something to do with armed robbers. He said, you know, I want to tell you, uh, the truth is that even my own brother or my own cousin or my own whatever, right here in Ghana, he mentioned the town. Armed robbers went there. The same thing happened to him. Just a few Weeks ago. So it's not that Uganda. Oh. It's not that there's something oh. with Uganda. And I, when he said that, I took note of it. That he was thinking clearly. It's not because you can always try to blame a place. You see? You see? This terrible, this dead, this accursed place. I will never have seen anybody here. I, will, I don't know anyone here. I will never have come here. Do you think I cannot talk like that about Kolegono? Who do I know in Kolegono? Where will I, what would have brought me to Kolegono? Somebody who have, I don't know any, anybody there. How can I even know somebody? I don't have uh, people there. <laughs> do you have people there? Doctor, do you know people in Kolegono? Yes. What would have taken us to Kolegono? Through Christ. We can all lift up our noses and say, eh, these people, these whatever people, this, whatever, this place, what, what place? What do you mean by that? You are in the wrong meeting. You came to the wrong meeting. Go back to wherever is a good place to you. You are the kind of dangerous person if you marry, ever marry a foreigner, you have a mixed marriage. When the next little marital problem comes, you will start. Ah! Ah! I know one couple, they married Ghana, Gambia. Ghana, Gambia marriage. Hey! When trouble started, yeah! You couldn't hear the end of Ghana or Gambia. Whether it's Ghana, Gambia, Ghana, Gambia. You Gambias this, you Ghanaians this, Ghanaians you Gambia. Hey! You couldn't hear the end of it. Yes. Because you look down on a place. I don't look down on any place. It's a good place to me. When I was in Kolegon, I loved Kolegon. I had dreams of, of Kolegon, what we were going to do. When that bishop came there, he stood at the rooftop. He looked around. He said, what? There is no 20th century building in this place. I don't see any 20th century building. I wasn't happy with what he was saying. Because I felt this is a great place. He was saying prophetically that there is no 20th century building here. <laughs> By the way, tomorrow he says he's coming to visit us. So. Yeah. Listen. 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 Have you noticed that it is places you despise that are being taken over by other religions? As you have lifted up your proud nose 
People have said, oh, they are okay for us. We like them. And they have taken all of them. You don't belong in this meeting. I'm telling you, if you look down on places, I want you to leave. I say, I want you to leave and go and join another meeting. You can come for another group meeting. Don't be in this group. If you look down on any town, any country, any group, you are in the wrong group. I'm telling you, not here. This place, it doesn't work. If you are being sent, go into the uttermost part of the... <clears throat> you lift your nose. When we bought Kolegono Church first, it hadn't got a roof and everything, I took a sister, one of our church members. I took her to Kolegono. It had no roof, toilet, everything was there. Like When I brought her there, I thought her eyes were bright with vision like my eyes. When she caught there, she said, is this the place? That time she was one of the top people working in one of the top banks. When she saw the place, she said, Hey! I was shaken. I said, It looks like I've made a mistake. Yes, she looked down on the place that the pastor of the largest church in the world was going to come to dedicate. Yes. She was looking down on the place where we were to have many revivals, weddings, many blessings. She looked down on it. Yes. Missionaries were to be sent from there. Many great programs and revivals and Bible schools and so many things were going to come. And she looked and said, Argh. It's because you are looking with the wrong eyes. When God says, Samaria, Argh. Judea, Argh. Atamos, <laughs> you are out of order man you are went too far uttermost who have been even in my life and ministry who have been a blessing to me is it rich people which rich person show me one rich person you show me one rich person Show me one person, just one. If you can find one, is the ordinary, the children, you and people. Bro, all those that are with me now, they were be like this. Beloved, we'll say, have you got this beloved? Okay, it didn't work. We've broken up. Let, okay, we are going for another one. Like that. <laughs> to break. Do you know how many times Bishop Oko, Botet Oko hey. had breaking up of relation for us to restart? <laughs> we'll sit down and plan. Let's plan again. Come, come, let's plan again. Do you know how many times? I said, do you know how many times that we sat, we sat back on the drawing board to re-strategize? The people that are a blessing, it is ordinary people with nothing. You don't have even beloved. You don't have any. You are sitting down to re-plan. Which rich person is the ordinary people? Yeah. So you are looking down on the treasure. You are looking down on the treasure in the place that is a treasure. You, are, you have made a great mistake. You have made a great mistake to look down and you, you say, oh, America, wow. Oh, Sierra, Sierra Leone. Whoa. <laughs> Ebola, it this, this, whatever. You wait and stay here and see. You get uh, something, will, another thing will bite you, another disease you come before you realize, you say, hey, even those at the Ebola zone, nothing is happening to them. <laughs> I thought I was safe in Ghana. I thought I was safe here. Not knowing that something else was coming. Yeah. Those of you who turn up your noses at places, you don't understand. You don't understand. Yeah. You don't understand the work of God. It is not where you think your blessing will come from. Sometimes it's from somewhere else. Yes. 
uttermost. Uttermost. Keep going, Doug. Keep going. Keep going to the ends of the earth. Keep preaching in corners. Keep preaching in little rooms. Keep preaching to small boys and small girls who are in the eyes of the world, small boys and small girls. And I will bless you. And I will bless you. And I will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 As you walk down the road that he asks you to go on, there may not be light in some patches. If you can learn to shut your mouth and not complain when there is darkness, you will soon come to a place of brightness. Light. Light will shine. Light will begin to shine. Light will begin to shine. And you will not even remember the darkness. For when he takes away the memory of the darkness and the memory of the sadness, it will be like history that is being told in the form of a story. You will not even be able to remember the feeling of the darkness and the feeling of the sadness because it would have passed away far into the past. And the Lord would have healed you. He would have given you two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. One is that your pain of your childhood is washed away. And the other is your fruitfulness has come. May the Lord give you the fruitfulness that comes when you don't despise his fields of harvest. May the Lord bless you and give you the honor that you deserve because you honored his calling. And you honored what he respected. And you loved what he loved. You loved the people he loved. You are kind to the people he was kind to. May the Lord help and remember you because of this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our obligations. Thank you that we will fulfill every obligation to travel anywhere, at any time, to do anything that you want us to do, Lord. We are glad that you will call us. It's an appointment to move. It's an appointment to go. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Sit down. Wow. What a blessing. Are you ready to be sent? The church must send or it will end. Yes. Look, I don't want to hide it from you. Your calling includes traveling. I don't want to hide it from you. Your calling includes movement. Sometimes it's to and fro, to and fro. Other times it's go and never come back. Yeah, I don't know. But there's a lot of movement in ministry. Yeah. When I watched Kenneth Hagin, you know, he died in 2003. When I watched his last programs, you know, like 2002, even 2003, <laughs> he, he was somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Different towns and cities in America preaching. Yeah. Just as he was when he was 20 something years old. Yeah. That's ministry. Are you ready for it? Wow. I know you think it's glamorous. There's some, always something wonderful uh, hidden inside. God has toughies, comforts. Little comforts to just encourage you. Yeah. Help you. Take this little one. Suck it. Sweetie. Keep you going. But not all is joyous. Kenneth Hagin said, he said something that his son will say, Daddy, do you have to go? Daddy, don't go. And he said, I got to go. 
Then he said he would park his car and move when he turns around the corner. Then he would park the car again. And then he would cry in the car. And cry and cry. When you have little children, you understand it. He would cry when he finishes crying. Then he would park the car again and continue. It pained him so much to go. Yeah. One day his wife said, you know, I want an ordinary husband. I don't want a husband who's traveling. So she started to put pressure. Be careful of your wife. Lest she redirects your cool calling. So one day, his wife was saying, I've had enough and I want him to be there. He was preaching. He collapsed. <sighs> Fell down. Then they jumped on him. It was like his heart was stopping. And as they were trying to revive him, the wife was standing there. Then she said she heard the voice of God. God said, I can take him somewhere. He will never come back. Do you like him to go and come? And go and come or to go and never come back? She chose go and come. She said, Lord, I choose going and coming. One time, one time. I choose going and coming. We'll manage it like that, Lord. We will manage it like that, Lord. And he rose up. And that was the end of that. Yeah. He got up. His wife, his wife, his wife. Should... Yes. His wife wrote one book. Kenneth Hagin's wife wrote only one book. It's called His Grace is, is His Grace is Greater. Or His Grace is, is not greater than his grace. The, the, the means something is not greater than his grace. His grace is greater than something. Yeah. You can do it. When you get to heaven, no more traveling. Residential. Your mansion. Visitation without end. Friendship and playing of guitars without end. Singing forever. Wow! Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited? excited? Are you ready to follow the obligations of a Christian to travel? Yes. It's our obligation. And I'm telling you, you think Doug Ewart Mills is going to save anybody? No. You, feel, you see how sad I feel in my room when I think about how little my life has done for God. I'm depending on you to rise up. God showed me that the way I can be fruitful is to have children and sons and pastors that I can raise up and who will do something. But not even me myself. It's the people that are being raised up. That's how I can be fruitful. Yeah. They will also do great things. Amen. Is it fantastic? Stand to your feet and thank God for tonight.
Hallelujah. You may be seated. How many obligations do you have? Number five. Your obligation to be a witness. Your obligation to be a witness. Amen. Wow. Wow. Now, your obligation to be a witness. What does it mean to be a witness? Hmm? Hmm? It is your obligation to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Today, we have a lot of pseudo-Christian things that are being preached in the church. But it is our obligation to talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I have an amen from somebody? Amen. You shall receive power of the Holy Ghost to come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses unto me is a little kind of like old English, but what it really means is like, like you'll be a witness of me, what you see. Okay? So, I remember one day when I was in a room in my, was staying somewhere, and a man quarreled with his girlfriend, and um, he took his car and started ramming the car into the house. And I was looking out of the window, and I was watching the guy shouting at the girl and the girl shouting back and then he got into his car moved forward to where these people are sitting then reversed the car at top speed pow the whole house shook forward again reversed pow and then forward again I think he did like three times and then got out of the car, swearing, shouting, got into the car and drove off. Then I was there when I suddenly saw the whole area was with blue lights. The police had come. So I went to sleep. <laughs> and a couple of days later, there was a knock. When I opened the door, was a policeman. And he said, please, a couple of nights ago, something happened here. Did you see? I said, did I saw? <laughs> you need me? For what? I have no time for your things. Now, the reason they were calling me was they wanted me to go to court and be a witness. What did I see on that fateful night? What I saw, what I know, wow. that I saw that day, and what I saw, what I know about that. Now, anyway, so can you believe that I went to court? Yeah. yeah. When I got to court, 
to, I had never been before. It was my first time. <laughs> so they said, witness number two. <laughs> so I stepped forward. I said, what did you see that night? And then I told them, number one, the anatomy of the upper limb <laughs> is very important in the study of general anatomy. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I told them. <laughs> this is what I told them. I told them, they said, what did I see? And then I said, well, number one, there are seven main laws of prosperity. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told. I said there are seven. The judge said, "Pardon? Excuse me, sir." I said, "I'm giving you the seven laws of prosperity." <laughs> no, that's not what I told him. <laughs> no, that's not what I told him. I'll tell you what I told him. I'll tell you what I told him. I'll tell you what I told him. told them, listen. <laughs> your, I didn't know how to say, so I mixed up your excellency or your honor or whatever. I didn't know how to say, your excellency, whatever. I said, when you are clacking a patient, you have to ask about the different systems, the cardiovascular system, the neurological system, the gastrointestinal system, and uh, the dermatological system, and which other system? The genital urinary and the musculoskeletal system. Pardon? Excuse me? I said, yeah. I'm explaining to you how to clack a patient. I said, no, no, no. Of course, you did not. You didn't understand what I was talking about. We said, were you there that night? Did you see anything? Did you see anything that night? You know, there was a, was a whole thing in front of you where you were living. Did you see anything that? I said, the, in the uh, gastrointestinal system, you have to ask. Did you have diarrhea? Do you uh, uh, vomit? Do you have stomach pain? Do you have what? Then I said, then the respiratory system asked, do you have, get breathless on short, little exertion? Do you have palpitations? Do you uh, 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 cough? Do you cough blood? When you cough, what is the color of the sputum? Is it yellow? Is there blood? Is there what? Uh, security, could you please? The, the, they were coming for me. Can you believe it? Because there I was talking gibberish. No, that's not what I told them. <laughs> That is not what I told them. That's not what I told them. Do you really want to know what I told them? I told them, I said, listen. I was there that night. What I want to tell you is very simple. In Ghana, we have a number of golf courses. Achimota golf course number one. Tema golf course. Celebrity golf course, Kumasi, Takwa. What? I said, I'm telling you, I'm describing the golf courses we have in Ghana. Yes. And so now, the different weather patterns give rise to different vegetation on the different golf. Wow. Immediately, I felt the blue. When I turned up, blue policeman, white man. He said, come this way, please. Come this way, please. And I said to the judge, bye. <laughs> and I walked out of the court. Do you think I told, that's what I told the judge? That is not what I told the judge. Do you want to know what I told the judge? I'll tell you tomorrow what I told the judge. But you see, I want you to know that I was under obligation to say what I knew. What I knew about that night, to share the details of what I knew. But I was going into anatomy and uh, clacking a patient, gastrointestinal system, asking about coughing and breathlessness and whether when you spit out, whether you, it's color yellow, is it green, is it blue, is there blood? Do you cough now? Do you sweat in the night? Do you have this? Do you... Wow. Tell him about golf courses and What are you talking about? Are you ta when you go to churches today, you hear them talking. So what, what is he talking about? What is he saying? What is he talking about, man? What is this? What topic is this? What are they saying? 
What are they saying? What are they talking about? Is it related? I mean, it's true, but is it what we are supposed to be hearing here? Is that why we are here? Is it relevant? I was under obligation to say what I saw that night. And you and I are under obligation to talk about Jesus Christ. Yes. Are you understanding? You really want to know what I told him that night? I'll tell you tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to tell you 96 different aspects of your obligation to say what you know about Jesus Christ. 96. 96. Yes. That's why we have to start that in the morning. Yes. If you saw, if you know, there's 96 different things. There may be 100, but at least for now, tonight is 96. I'll, I'll tell you each one. I'll let you write down each one. Yeah. So that you, you go and be the real witness. Talk about the real thing. Stop all this nonsense talking about anatomy at the wrong place. It, you see, and it's, 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 the things I'm saying about anatomy, they are true. You see, this is the point. Uh, and we are not saying that it's not true or that it's a lie or it's false. It's true, but that is not what we need here. <laughs> when you bring in all these things, you are, like, you are like a mad person in the sight of God. You remember the brother? Um, is, he, is, he, is he David, the one who was a Buddhist? Kwabana, Kwabana, yeah. Stand up. Kwabana, stand up. He was a Buddhist. But he is one person whose testimony should make you shiver. Because he said, I came to church to give my life to Jesus. When he was preaching, I was saying, hurry up. Hurry up. And come to the place where you will give me the chance to give my life. This is why I'm here. Supposing that they had decided to speak about the neurological sensations that we want to test on a patient. Supposing that they we decided to check the cardiovascular system and go through the symptoms of heart failure. Do you feel your heart beating? Do you feel palpitations? Do you have a breathlessness on minimal exertion when you lie down do you feel that when you sit up how do you feel do you hear any sound of wheezing this and that and that and this uh, is very important in cardiovascular respiratory system and therefore want to conclude on these two systems today next week we shall be dealing with the neurological and the musculoskeletal systems you wonder what we are preaching about You wonder, how many think the, tomorrow I'll tell you what I told the judge. How many think the judge thought I was mad? He must have thought I was crazy. He must have thought I was crazy. I always remember that day. Judge knocked at the door. When I looked in the room, I saw the police. My heart started beating. <laughs> I was asked, do I have a visa? <laughs> and I realized all they wanted from me was to be a witness. Yeah. Talk about what I know and talk about the details and describe it to the people and let them see and even imagine based on what I saw. So they will really understand it and they will really see everything, how it really happened. I'm the one who saw it. I'm the only one who saw it that night. I was awake because I was praying. It was after midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I was praying and I was looking out of the window. I saw everything. 
I'm the best person to speak about it. I'll tell you what I told them tomorrow. Do you want to know what I told them? Wow. Stand to your feet. All right. I hear there are some meatballs. Wow. What else is there tonight? Spaghetti. Wow. Some of you don't know what spaghetti is. Because your flesh has not been trained in spaghetti. But tonight, your flesh is going to be trained in something new. One day, you will be somewhere, you say, give me some spaghetti. Because I was once at Anakazu and I ate spaghetti. Lift up your hands. Give glory to God. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. Son of God and all the one who see you are.
Put your hand on your heart. Father, touch every heart. Touch every heart here. Touch every heart. Touch every heart. Mando Christ, Malaka, Masamele. Lobo Rebele, Mende, 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 Mende. Lei Mende, 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 M Thank you for calling us. Thank you for sending us. Thank you for the obligation. We are obliged to be reasonable. We are obliged to go. We are obliged to witness. We are obliged to say it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this great honor. We will do it, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory.